Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for participating in this Erasmus Day online event, Wellbeing in Education for a Resilient Society. I'm Gonzalo Santa Maria from Acte Sofia, and I have the pleasure to moderate this two hour seminar in which we will present the results of our successful Erasmus Plus project, Friends. That means fostering resilience, inclusive education, and non discrimination in schools. Together with the activities that, after the official end of the project in this January 2020, we will explain you the continuing activity that we are developing during this, this month. In a very in a special case now, during this recovery phase after this unfortunate lockdown. The Friends project aimed at promoting resilience and eliminating stress and negative emotion and behaviors in a school. So it's very pertinent in this time. We, this, this project uh, stressed uh, in the implementation of a, of a well-researched and innovative approach that promotes inclusive education through well-being, what is the quiet time with transcendental meditation program for schools. The event will be divided into five parts, okay? First of all, a, a short explanation about the project. Then the results of the research conducted by our partners university, the University of Algarve from Portugal and the Bologna University from Italy. Later on, we, we will pass to the experiences from all the participant countries during this three year, two years uh, project. And after the experience from all the countries, we will uh, explain you our policy recommendation that we delivered to the uh, European Commission and, and all the uh, European institutions. After that, we will have a time for question and discussion. Uh, during the, the event, we will see different videos of experience of the project implementation in the different countries. Just to remember you, uh, all the participants, that the chat, the, we have a chat, yes, you can see, will be open during the whole session, so you can raise your questions that might arise, and then we will try to answer it uh, at the end of the event. Thank you, then for being here, for, for staying online with us, and hope that you will enjoy our event. And now it's time to pass the floor to our project coordinator, Fabrizio Boldrini, managing director from the Centro Studi Villa Montesca from Italy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gonzalo and Do, for uh, uh, having accepted the invitation to be part of this event. Uh, embedded in the Erasmus Days celebration. It's uh, uh, very relevant, this project inside, the, especially the focus that Erasmus uh, uh, gives to the social inclusion. And that is a, a, an action that is managed directly by Brussels. I would like to explain in five minutes and no more because the seminar is quite long. So to to give the floor to all the very interesting participants, uh, more than me. Uh, in five minutes, uh, I would like to explain a bit what is the main floor, conceptual floor, where uh, the project bases his, its uh, uh, conclusion and, and findings. Um, I remember a Monty Python movie, The Meaning of Life, when the main actor, Terry Jones, was asked to uh, explain us the meaning of life. and uh, the answer, I will explain the meaning of life in five minutes. So I, I will do more or less the same. He started singing a song, I want to eat, by try to just uh, uh, give some main points about uh, our project, that is the application of the, the technique, a very, a very old and experimental technique, the transcendental meditation in uh, schools, with the aim to reduce uh, the level of conflicts and to promote uh, an open, uh, uh, um, social inclusion. Uh, first of all, why uh, we adopted this method? Uh, I can make reference to 
the study of uh, a, a psychologist, an American psychologist, Alison Gopnik, that describes the approaches that the, the children uh, used to have uh, when they uh, see the reality. Uh, this is quite different from the approaches the adults uh, in general have. Uh, she um, uh, defined this uh, uh, status of the children that are very interesting in Discover the World because they are in face of many things that they don't know. A lantern conscientiousness is a sort of uh, uh, unintellectual uh, but conceptual, very rooted conceptual status when you can uh, start giving uh, a meaning to the things and to the facts. Um, it's something like uh, uh, you live when, uh, when you are in, uh, in a movie, for instance, and uh, where you are in a, in a, a fantastic movie or in Star Trek or something that is not uh, strictly related to the reality of your life, but you see the protagonists that are able to do something that is not normal, uh, for instance, jumping a lot or uh, having special powers, uh, like in the Avengers, and for a, a for a moment, you are quite um, involved in this new reality. And so you are uh, not uh, conceptualized the, the meaning of what is happening in the movie and what is in the reality. And according also to uh, Maria Montessori, uh, she defined uh, this, uh, this status tabula rasa, means something that is completely wide and uh, completely uh, out of concept that you have to con uh, uh, build with some new concept. And it is very uh, powerful, this uh, uh, side of our mind, because uh, it allows you to uh, learn something new and uh, without prejudices. It is very important because most of the problems we leave in the school uh, about the social uh, exclusion of people immigrants or people with disabilities are based on prejudices or, or in a, a traditional conceptual and cultural uh, definitions. And so it's very important that our project try to do what uh, a, um, the Gopnik, Gopnik defined uh, that this uh, lantern consciousness to create some uh, using these techniques a, some a status, a mental status of the, of the children in order to give them the possibility, the opportunity to, uh, to make this experience that normally is, is linked to the very, very early times of the children uh, during uh, their school life. And uh, as uh, we will see the results, uh, uh, can demonstrate that uh, we had uh, some uh, successful uh, situation in this, uh, in this project. Uh, the, the second thing I would like to, to discuss with you opening this, uh, this seminar is uh, mm, a, a, that we are living these times of, uh, of uh, COVID uh, and, uh, and pandemia situation. Um, about this, I would like to um, introduce the, uh, the contribution that uh, uh, the Transcendental Meditation, the Friend Project can uh, uh, give in these specific times. Because uh, we are a lot, uh, we have a lot of study, a lot of data about the reduction of the economic performances uh, and the recovery fund is mostly expected to give something about the economic recovery. But uh, um, what we are experiencing is not, experimenting is not that we are not just uh, a decrease of performance uh, all, uh, only in the side of the economy, uh, but in the expect expectations the children can have about their future. If I don't dream uh, to be a, a teacher in my future life, uh, uh, it's very difficult that uh, I, I, I will be a teacher in the future. And this uh, uh, um, uh, ability uh, to see the future uh, with an optimistic uh, way is very important. And um, I uh, have seen some findings uh, produced, the first findings produced by the University of Palo Alto in, in the United States about uh, uh, this uh, level, reduced level, 
of uh, um, ability to dream uh, that are uh, involved in uh, our students in school. They are very uh, worried about their future, but not just it. Uh, they would like, uh, they don't have the same vision we had when we were children uh, looking at the future life. And this uh, uh, probably, this can have a very dramatic consequences in the future of, uh, of our uh, European uh, in integration. And so I, I would like to take this opportunity to present again uh, in, in the framework of Erasmus that we know that is a European uh, project of uh, cooperation in the field of education uh, to uh, recommend uh, uh, to the states uh, to take into account also uh, in, uh, in thinking the future of the recovery fund, uh, the opportunity to help all the project, to support all the project that can give also a, a new uh, way, a new methodology for uh, uh, starting uh, uh, dreaming again. I think it's very important. And uh, I hope that experiences like uh, uh, the friends one can be very important for the future of our country. So I think the starting again from this uh, seminar, uh, this consortium can uh, uh, give a contribution to the future, the next future of our students, because I think we are living a very dramatic period. So uh, this uh, experience uh, we, uh, carried out during the project can help a lot. Thank you very much for your passage. Abbiamo 900 alunni, circa 400 alla scuola secondaria di primo grado e 500 circa alla scuola primaria. Quindi è un istituto grande e anche molto complesso perché abbiamo all'interno del nostro istituto una grande eh, presenza sia in termini assoluti che anche percentuali di alunni con bisogni educativi speciali e in particolare eh, un uh, aumento progressivo di alunni con disturbi evolutivi, eh, ad esempio disturbi di attenzione, problemi di comportamento. La scuola che oggigiorno è comunque diventata un luogo in cui le, le tensioni della società odierna si fanno sentire, dove c'è comunque tanta frenesia, i bambini hanno sempre tanto da fare, hanno tanto da fare a scuola perché gli stimoli sono tanti, hanno tanto da fare fuori scuola perché ci sono le attività extrascolastiche, perché ci sono gli impegni dei genitori, i tempi sono sempre ristretti. Quando una mia insegnante mi ha proposto questo progetto che conosceva, ho pensato perché no, perché no, perché non provare? feedback che sono arrivati eh, dagli alunni, che sono tutti alunni della scuola eh, primaria, siamo partiti con cinque classi della scuola primaria, quarta e quinta, sono stati estremamente positivi, sorprendentemente positivi. E questo lo hanno notato sia gli alunni, che hanno, lo hanno scritto proprio, mi sento più tranquillo, mi sento più calmo, riesco a pensare meglio, che gli insegnanti. E si accorgono che eh, da quando le, gli alunni della loro classe meditano eh, questo ricade ovviamente anche sulle relazioni all'interno del gruppo classe. Una più grande una stimmung in classe che si è leichter più arbeiten, le bambine non sono più così uh, unruhig, si finden ihre Arbeit, bleiben bei ihrer Arbeit und um, sind auch untereinander viel netter zueinander. Mi aiuta molto per la concentrazione, mi riesco a concentrare un po' meglio. La mattina mi dà energia per continuare la giornata e il pomeriggio mi rilassa. Quando facevo le verifiche ero agitata e non riuscivo a scrivere. Invece adesso mi aiuta la meditazione perché non sono più tanto agitata. Da quando ho iniziato la meditazione mi sento più forte di carattere, cioè in senso che eh, già lo scorso anno ero molto sensibile e, e adesso 
eh, so reagire e mi sono rafforzato anche con gli amici, sono adesso molto più socievole, più sicuro di me. Fabrizio for the for the introduction and I think that this video is a perfect summary of what the our Fred's project means. Now I pass the floor to the next presentation by Franz van Aschen from the University of Leven. And the, the presentation will be uh, well-being, resilience and education. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. So my name is Franz van Assen from the University of Leuven. So I will be talking about well-being, resilience and other factors rel related to well-being in education. <clears throat> As uh, Fabrizio was saying, the Friends project was dealing with the inclusive education. And in this context, the requirement of well-being, both for students and teachers, is considered. As an example, if the student or the teacher does not feel well, important success factors for inclusive education, such as the student-teacher relationship, suffers and the effectiveness of inclusive education decreases. In the next five minutes, I will go with you over some of the mechanics of well-being and how this influence, influences inclusive education. Um, first, the concept, uh, the first concept is well-being. For this, we use the well-known well-being model of Dodge and others, who describe well-being as a balance between physiological, physical and social challenges, and that you see on the right-hand side, and resources on the left-hand side. So th this is uh, the model of Dodge and, and others, which described it as a, as a balance. Translating this model to the field of education, this means that challenges and resources should be understood in terms of cognitive, social, emotional and motoric talents and skills. So typically in these areas, um, the, the challenges are increased such that students acquire these skills while the well-being balance is maintained. Now, using this well-being model of Dodge, we can easily see that the disadvantages that young people face, like disabilities, health problems, belonging to a minority, language problems, and, and, and so on, had such a tremendous amount of challenges that the resources these youngsters have available are to a large extent directed to facing these fewer opportunity challenges rather than educational challenges. So they are busy with all, all things not related to education, the challenges not related to education, and this is why they actually are uh, having a disadvantage in education. The European Commission is uh, quite extensively, so they are talking about disabilities, uh, mental, physical, sensory, health problems, educational difficulties, um, including early school leavers, and so on, cultural differences, immigrants, refugees, descendants of immigrants, uh, ethnic minorities, economic obstacles, young people with a low standard of living, social obstacles, uh, discrimination is, is there uh, important, um, young and or single parents, orphans and so on, and then finally geographical obstacles that the Commission understands as fewer opportunities. And those are actually the, the young people that, that we want to address to, in, in inclusive education to facilitate uh, inclusive education and a better education for them. The lack of 
uh, well-being or the impact of the lack of well-being has also been confirmed and quantified by the OECD, so the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, that also um, issues uh, regularly uh, PISA studies. So the, the PISA studies are the program for international student assessment. And, and so they are comparing different countries um, and how the education there is, is uh, doing well or not so well. So th their study of 2015 on, on well-being shows that anxiety about schoolwork, homework and test is negatively related to performance in science, mathematics and reading. So simply uh, anxiety is, is uh, influencing that. They, are, they also found related to the, the students that I was talking about, the disadvantaged students, um, so the students with lesser opportunities, they have less motivation to achieve than advantaged students do. And then they conclude students who are amongst the most motivated score 38 points higher in science. And this is equivalent of more than one year of schooling. So you see that disadvantaged students might lose one year of schooling simply because of their situation. Another finding is that students across OECD countries who reported that they feel like an outsider at school scored 22 points lower in science on average than those who did not report so. Another finding of, of OECD is that schools where the incidence of bullying is high by international standards, score 47 points lower in science. So this is more than a year that, that those uh, people, that those youngsters are losing. And then finally, in the context of the, the COVID-19, also the commission has actually um, voiced a substantial concern about the well-being of, of youngsters. So, so this, give you an, an example of, of actually the, the scope of the problems that, that the, the people are facing in inclusive education. Now, so therefore the key to successful inclusive education is that we need to restore the balance by decreasing the challenges coming from fewer opportunities and on the other hand, increasing the resources affecting the well-being. As an example, it could be a decrease in bullying and an increase in resilience and tolerance. And the approach taken in the Friends project was the implementation of QTT or the QTTM program. And QTTM stands for, as has already said, the quiet time based on transcendental meditation program. In summary, what we are looking for as a result of this QTTM program is some changes for students, teachers, and for the school as a whole. So for students, we would like to see an increase of resilience, pro-social behavior, decrease on the number of negative factors. For teachers, we would like to see an increase of general job satisfaction, positive evaluation of one's own life, intrinsic motivation, balance, balance of positive and negative effects, a decrease of emotional exhaustion, which is related to burnout, emotional hardening, perceived stress and threat anxiety. The third thing that we are looking at is the improvement of the whole school atmosphere. This is what we would like to see. So what you will hear in the next sessions is how this QTTM program works and is implemented the scientific results and policy uh, considerations and recommendations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Fran. Very interesting presentation. So now the next presentation is for the implementation coordinators of the Friends Project, uh, Mirta and Stefano. Please, Mirta. Okay. 
So uh, basically, there were two projects uh, in this uh, Erasmus Plus uh, Key Action Tree program for social inclusion through education that were going on in the last three years. The first one has been the Europe project. Europe stands for ensuring unity and respect as an outcome for the people of Europe. And the, both, the, both projects were based on the QTTM, on the Quiet Time on Transcendental Meditation program. And the Europe project was implementing in Sweden, in Portugal, and in Holland. And had a target uh, students from, 15, uh, from 12 years to uh, end of scholastic year, 18 years old. And the Friends project came up one year after in 2018 as an upscale of the Europe project, expanding the implementation at national level in Portugal and also expanding it in new countries such as UK, Belgium and Italy. And also expanding the target from children five years old till adult education. Actually, I want to say that the characteristic of all the implementation, almost all the implementation that we had in, uh, um, in the Friends project were the participation of primary schools. The target had been disadvantaged students and learners and the objectives promoting inclusive education and supporting teachers in dealing with the increasing diversity in the learning environment. Overall, the two projects have involved in the training more than 2,300 students, about 1,250 teachers, and more than 310 300 parents. For a total of more than 52 clusters of schools and schools that have been involved in Europe, in all the different countries, in the project. And also with an expansion in new sector, like migrant, prisons, sport, and also an expansion in to higher education. Going to see some specific feature in the different countries, we could see that in Portugal was very strong the expansion at national level. It started in the Europe from one school, the Alberto Ria School that had been the pioneer of the project. And today we will connect with this school and we'll see the development, the actual development. And it's expanded to all of Algarve and then the southern region and then to Lisbon and to the northern region up to the island of Madeira. And there are various reasons that could have steered this huge expansion. For sure, a great synergy that there was between the Europe project and, and the France project, sorry, in this case, and a governmental programs such as the TAPE for children, disadvantaged children in disadvantaged, ter uh, di disadvantaged schools in disadvantaged territories, and also with UNESCO school that gave a visibility to our project, both at national level, but also outside, like to Portuguese speaking countries. Also the interaction with the Directorate General of the Ministry of Education, the issuing of a flexibility law that allowed more easily to implement our program, uh, and also the collaboration and the partnership with teacher training centers that were public structure, that were offering TM as a professional training, accredited to the career to the teachers and also the participation of parent association all these have been very great contribution to this expansion and also are now to the sustainability of the project in the uk we had the specific participation of alternative provision schools eight of them and these are very special schools that are for students that have been excluded for any reason by from mainstream education and especially for behavioral reasons, so are a very stressful um, environment of, uh, for teaching and are schools in which there is a ha much higher proportion of teacher compared to students. So basically uh, the project there focused on the support of the teachers specifically and many of these schools want to continue are continuing as we will see in the experiences. Also in UK there was an expansion to sport. In Italy, uh, beside the, uh, the implementation in the schools, and I want to say in Italy, like in many more schools, uh, in all the other countries, there have been much, much more requests than what could be, uh, we could fulfill with, the, with our project alone. And so there have been always search also of how to 
manage with other means to uh, support this expansion. And in Italy in particular, as we will see uh, when, we, uh, when we connect with, this, uh, with the experiences, there have been a very interesting expansion in prison through a, actually a private grant, uh, a grant from a bank. And also there have been the involvement of the Youth Council, the participation as partner of a municipality. Uh, in Belgium, beside the, um, the implementation both in the Flemish Belgium and in the Francophone Belgium, then we also in schools, in primary schools, we had also a very interesting expansion with migrants, uh, with the participation of historic organization offering shelter to migrants since more than 15 years in Belgium uh, with the training of the staff and the, and the people, the, the hosts. And the staff and the founder were so enthusiastic that they um, uh, uh, applied also for, uh, for two new grants from the EU Solidarity Corp, a new uh, and a different program in the EU to create social moments, to just uh, uh, involve even more other youth and uh, uh, migrants. This, the project also expanded in various countries, such also Ireland and Romania, and then it's continuing. The, that's, that's the most interesting thing. After the end of the project in January, the project has been continuing. There have been a lot of training in many of the countries through different means. And uh, uh, it continuing uh, both in the schools and also uh, for migrants and in the prisons. And uh, we, it continued also during confinement. And we will hear experiences that people found it very, very beneficial to have learned this technique before. And so there is an actuality of friends' results in the current world situation. In fact, friends' results, as also before me they were saying, can be really useful to answer the emerging priorities and the needs that are identified in this actual world situation. We could see we are now in this recovery phase and uh, the France project demonstrated that QTTM provides outcomes promoting emotional and psychological well-being and these are essential elements for supporting uh, all of us to overcome this recovery phase. Uh, both in the education sector, in other sectors, in the health sector, etc. And also, obviously, it could be uh, the result of the France could be very helpful for the prospective following phases from the government of resilience to cre for creating quindi, so a resilient society uh, where people not only with resilience uh, react to a challenging situation, but also as the means uh, in terms of creativity, of intelligence, of creating innovation. And um, I just want to thank you. And this is our photo, the photo of all the partners of the, of the friends and uh, uh, of some of the participants and the speaker after our conference in Brussels. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mirta. Very interesting presentation. I think that is a perfect uh, summary of what we have done in, in the French project uh, and what we still can do because uh, the project, as we said at the, at the beginning, finished uh, in January this year, but we are still doing some activities uh, and hope that we will have a continuation also with the project. So now we continue. We are a little bit in delay, but don't worry. We, we we, ma we will manage to, to listen to everybody and to, and to have questions at the end. So next, uh, next speaker will be Ashley Deans, Professor of, edu of Education and Physics. He will, um, he will explain about what is uh, the Quiet Time and Transcendental Meditation Program for Education. So it's an answer to emerging priority and needs. Thank you, Ashley, please. Great. Thank you very much. So it's a great pleasure to be able to talk to you today at this Erasmus Day. And I would like to spend a little while to talk about <clears throat> what is quiet time with transcendental meditation in education. It is an answer to emerging priorities and needs. So the first thing is that the transcendental meditation program is 
a completely unique innovation in education today that is really very greatly needed at this time. And the first thing that is needed in education is the need to optimize brain functioning. This is a very new idea in education. Usually we're dealing with students and we do the best that we can with the students we have. But the idea of actually developing the holistic functioning of their brain is a new idea. And why do we need to develop the brain? Well, we know that stress damages the brain. So firstly, we need an antidote for stress. But what's so important is that we should be developing the prefrontal cortex here in the brain, the thinking brain. So though that's the area that governs things like impulse control and long-term planning, concentration, emotional stability, learning abilities, self-awareness, ethical thinking. All of the higher human values need to be developed. And what we find when we look at the brain during the practice of transcendental meditation, and particularly here we're looking at the brain waves, we find that if we look on the left, the art with eyes open, there's very little coherence between different areas of the brain, very little during eyes closed. But during transcendental meditation, the whole brain becomes coherent with the frontal cortex fully lively and communicating well with the occipital cortex. So that you see that now the higher human values begin to be able to govern the whole brain. We see also the left side, the analytical side and the artistic side on the right becoming more coherent. So this is really a new innovation in education, develop the coherent functioning of the brain. And what happens then is that all areas of academic performance improve. So we find that creativity increases, practical intelligence, field independence, mental efficiency, abstract intelligence, all of the qualities that you find in the very, very best students, they all begin to improve simply by putting in two periods during the school day of about 15 minutes each where the students can practice transcendental meditation in the classroom as part of the regular curriculum. Now we see in physics that finer levels of nature are more powerful. Ultimately, nature is unified. Here on the right with transcendental meditation, we find subtler levels of thinking are more powerful. And ultimately we experience that field of unity within us, that field of unity that pervades the entire universe. And this is the self-realization that every student is looking for. So let's look now at what happens to the stress level of the individual when they're practicing transcendental meditation. We see here over the last 30 years, many studies, here's a compilation. You see there are techniques of concentration, there are other techniques, and there's transcendental meditation. And the conclusion is from meta-analyses of randomized control trials that transcendental meditation is by far the most effective way of reducing anxiety. And we see at this time of the epidemic large increases of anxiety across the whole population, including students and teachers. So this is going to be a very valuable tool. And when we look at teachers who are now experiencing unprecedented levels of burnout because they're on the front line, they could become infected with COVID, they have all of the usual demands on them that teachers have. And we see after four months in this study that the TM group compared to the control group in this randomized control study had highly significant reductions in burnout. We also see with students this study from the American Journal of Hypertension that total distress went down, anxiety went down, depression, anger, hostility went down, coping ability increased. So all of the positive qualities increase and the negative qualities decrease. And then let's look at the effects of stress reduction on health. This is only a couple of studies, but highly interesting that this recent study in the International Journal of Yoga showed that with transcendental meditation, the NK cells, the lymphocytes and the T cells were significantly improved after four months of transcendental meditation. And here we see health insurance statistics looking at hospital admissions 
and notice that respiratory diseases, infectious diseases, as well as heart disorders were highly significantly decreased. So this is a great innovation that we can introduce to prevent problems in education and in health. And then when we look at social behavior, here's a study from the Journal of Education looking at a school in San Francisco, where after transcendental meditation was introduced, there was a 79% drop in suspensions over three years. And these suspensions are due to bullying and violence. So we see the whole climate of the school begins to improve significantly after introducing transcendental meditation. So in summary, what we see is increased resilience, increased vitality and well-being, creativity, learning ability, empathy and emotional balance and tolerance, and decreased stress, anxiety, negative affects, burnout and violence. So you see in one stroke, we can address all of the pressing problems in education today by simply introducing transcendental meditation into the school day. So this is the results we're going to see now of the research from the Friends Project and the Europe Project. So thank you very much, everyone. We'll be happy to take questions at the end of the session. Thank you, Ashley. Now we will see one video. My name is Milena Moneta. I teach Italian and history at Capirola Institute in Leno. My experience with meditation was at first difficult. I approached it and then distanced myself because I was looking for a kind of meditation that was 100% effective. I found it in transcendental meditation after I inquired about its scientific value. It was extraordinary then to discover that my students could benefit from it as I did. The 15 minutes we dedicate to transcendental meditation at the beginning of class spread invaluable peace around us and I hope it can spread throughout our whole school too. Transcendental meditation has made me more tranquil and flexible. Transcendental meditation helps you face unexpected events in everyday life. It's a bit tough at the beginning because you have to overcome prejudice. You need willpower and constancy to keep practicing it. But it takes up very little time each day. If you practice it the right way, you can get great benefit from it. I think I'm very lucky to have discovered and learned it. Transcendental meditation has changed my life completely. This year I finally started to look people in the eyes while talking. After two or three weeks of regular practice, I stopped suffering from headaches too. Since I started practicing it, transcendental meditation has helped me a lot. Above all at school and in personal relationships. At school I'm much more relaxed, especially during oral tests, if compared to last year when I was much more nervous. Transcendental meditation has changed me not only as a student, but also in my private life and as an athlete. I noticed improvements in notes in subjects I used to struggle with. I'm also better at swimming when I meditate before competitions. Since I'm calmer, my performances are better. When our teacher introduced us to transcendental meditation, I did not want to do it. I thought it was something useless. The first day I started practicing, I immediately felt more relaxed and calmer. Now I feel it's a bit easier to understand what I'm studying, and I'm more focused.
great video. Uh, uh, it's a very good experience uh, in, uh, in Brescia in Italy. So we finished the first part of our event. So it's the description of the project. And now we pass to the second part, that is the results of the research conducted by the, our partner university, University of Algarve from Portugal and University of Bologna from Italy. So I pass the floor to the University of Algarve, to Sergio Vieira, eh, Alessandra Gomez. Thank you. Hi to you all. <laughs> Hello. We are going to, to share our screen. We will be dividing our results uh, between us, Chiara and Annette, and we are only showing the results from the Portuguese study. They will, they will present uh, results from, um, from Italy, Chiara and Annette from UK and Belgium samples. So, um, we would like first to present you the results from teachers and staff. In the France project in Portugal, we collected 84 um, longitudinal sample, 84 uh, teachers and staff. Uh, as you can see, they were primarily females uh, with an average age of 46 years, uh, almost 47 years old. Uh, and they fulfilled a questionnaire uh, related to several psychological measures as job satisfaction, measures from anxiety and burnout, uh, the effects, the negative and positive effects, life satisfaction, overall life satisfaction, intrinsic motivation, yes, vitality, stress and psychological well-being. As you can see, we decided to show uh, the results in a, a summary table. Uh, and we see that general job satisfaction increased. Vitality also increased in the, the sample that, um, uh, in the individuals that practice TM. Intrinsic motivation increased. Positive effects also increased and negative effects decreased. Uh, but we cannot see uh, uh, a significant results in uh, psychological well-being, in personal growth, and positive relation with others. Although, in the other four dimensions, purpose in life, self-acceptance, autonomy, environmental mastery, uh, they increased also. Related to burnout, we saw a decrease in, in, in emotional exhaustion and the personalization. Also, perceived stress decreased, satisfaction with life increased, and the anxiety state and trait also decreased. The subjective well being, it's a composed measure uh, that uses um, perceived uh, satisfaction with life and the, the effects, the positive and negative effects. And we can see that subjective well being perceived by our participants increased. Concerning the children, of five to 11 years old, uh, we gathered a longitudinal sample of 92 uh, students with an age of eight years, an average age, and primarily females also. They fulfilled this, at least the, the, the parents or the ones that are um, their legal, um, legal, legal tutors, um, fulfilled a questionnaire concerning strengths and difficulties uh, of our uh, students and the Devereux Strengths Assessment. Our students decreased significantly hyperactivity and external symptoms, uh, showing a, a better adjustment uh, in the form they present their anxiety. We also ran uh, some interviews. It's a qualitative study. Um, based upon semi-structured interviews to nine teachers. And uh, these interviews uh, focused four domains, the perceived behaviors and indiscipline in their classes, the environment learning, the school overall atmosphere, and the personal benefits that they believe to have after practicing uh, the transcendental meditation. We are not uh, going to go really further, but uh, I can say that they describe as being more calm, uh, the, the classes being more calm, tranquil, um, students being more focused and with higher self-regulation. 
Um, they also see improvements in the academic uh, performance at the autonomy of the students and the focus of these students. Um, regarding school atmosphere, they feel that the, the climate of the school improved, there are less conflicts and increased cohesion. Finally, the personal benefits uh, of the quiet time was being more calm, having more tranquility, overall joy and happiness, and to be more resilient and more determined about their lives. To summarize some key findings from Portugal, we can see that has TM as a positive and significant effect in psychological dimensions on well-being for children and adults. And adults report greater and better connections with others and increased sense of self-competence and subjective well-being. And children report more emotional self-control. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Alessandra. Now we, we pass to um, Annette Stelunder from uh, Rambo University, um, independent researcher for the project. Please, Annette. My name is uh, Annette Telinder from the Radboud University uh, in the Netherlands, and uh, I will uh, uh, tell you about uh, the, uh, the studies of Germany uh, as, a, as an expansion uh, country and uh, of uh, Belgium and the UK. Uh, first, uh, we, uh, uh, I tell you about testing teachers and students. We had a longitudinal longitudinal quantitative uh, studies, the standardized psych psychological questionnaires, uh, pre-tests uh, before starting uh, the intervention and then 12 weeks intervention of uh, um, quiet time and transcendental meditation and afterwards a post-test. Uh, the questionnaires were conducted by local partners in Germany, Brussels and uh, uh, in the UK. And the question has adapted to the level of understanding of the students and the attention span. They were also in the local language, translated, and the teaching and staff uh, questionnaires also available in the local language. From Belgium, there were 82 students. Um, the mean age uh, was uh, seven uh, uh, years old and 52% uh, were female. 26 teachers, mean age uh, 41 years old. Uh, almost all female. The UK, 75, uh, 57 teachers, also mean age uh, 44, and uh, all, all, almost all females teachers. And uh, from the Germany, 10 teachers, mean age 42, also female uh, teachers, uh, most of, all, of them. And 15 students uh, from uh, the secondary school, uh, mean age 14 uh, years. So, in total, from Belgian, Eng English, and German teachers, 93 teachers and 79 students. Uh, the students practice transcendental meditation and other students rest or read in complete silence uh, every morning, five minutes, and every school afternoon, 15 minutes. Uh, we are striving for the work-life balance, uh, as Franz uh, told already, well-being and education from Dutch et al. The resources are talents and acquired skills, and the challenges in the school situation are cognitive, cognitive and effective. Uh, so, uh, for example, stress, learning difficulties, and hyperactivity. So, in this study, we measured subjective well-being, for example, positive feelings such as inspiration, happiness, and personal resources, such as self-confidence and optimism. Uh, the goal is self-balancing through uh, quiet time transcendental meditation for more resources and less challenges. So we hypothesized uh, some uh, results for a quiet uh, after a quiet time uh, intervention. More well-being, better school satisfaction, higher resilience, reduced stress level, and decreased teacher burnout. And these are the sources where we found it. So uh, these are some examples from the teacher questionnaires, the burnout uh, uh, in, in, uh, and life satisfaction, perceived stress and positive and negative feelings. For the student questionnaires, some examples 
for example, uh, to measure strength and difficulties, to measure re resilience, for example, I don't expect much of myself in the future, and to measure, measure uh, school satisfaction, for example, I feel good at my school. Uh, results for, from the teachers. Um, uh, after three months uh, of uh, uh, education, um, 70, seven and a half percent more satisfaction with life. For example, in most ways, my life is close to ideal. So you can see uh, the before and after the intervention. And 88,2% uh, more job satisfaction. I feel good about my job. And for example, 5% more personal realization. In my work, I deal with emotional problems very calmly. So you, you can see it is uh, going into the right direction. The results of the, the teachers um, are less feelings of emotional exhaustion. So it's less burnout. I feel burned out from my work. 13% uh, 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 went it down, so it's, it's a very good result. And stress also, 10% uh, less perceived stress. In the last month, how often have you felt nervous and stressed, for example? So it's 10%, it's, it's, a, it's a huge drop down. For the students, more school satisfaction and positive feelings and resilience and less negative feelings. So after three months, at first, this score, and after three months, four and a half percent more school satisfaction, 15% more positive feelings, 26% less negative feelings, and 1% more resilience. So for example, they feel more inspired, feel less nervous, and they can better work out with their problems. And above all, they like going to school more. So uh, st statistical results from the students uh, uh, was also five and a half percent less emotional symptoms. For example, I feel often unhappy, downhearted or tearful. So you can see it is a huge drop down and less hyper uh, hyperactivity, six percent. I feel restless, overactive and cannot say, stay still for long. So for the teachers and for the students, it's, it's a huge, nice results. So for conclusion, statistical results from the participating teachers from the countries uh, showed more job satisfaction and life satisfaction, more personal realization and feelings of control, less physical stress symptoms. As Ashley told, it's very important that uh, less stress and less physical symptoms, less emotional exhaustion and feelings of burnout for the teachers, also important. And the participating students showed more school satisfaction, more positive effects, higher resilience, less emotional symptoms such as feeling unhappy or tearful, less hyperactivity, less negative effects. The results were re reliable and uh, as hypothesized uh, it, uh, as I showed you, the results were all in the expected direction. So this indicates a positive result after introducing the quiet time program with the transcendental meditation for the participating countries, Belgian, English, and German teachers and students. These are the sources, the references. In summary, the key findings are TM lowers stress levels for teachers and students, positive outlook on life increases, persons become happier, and more satisfied, hyperactivity and burnout decrease. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Annette. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your interesting presentation result that are, as always, as we already discovered during the project, is really positive for all the students, yes, really, eh? students and, and teachers. So. And the next one will be Chiara Ruini from University of Bologna, who will present on the results in, in Italy. Please, Chiara. Hello to everyone. Thank you for, okay. this, for this invitation. So basically, this, this presentation will be like a confirmation to the good results that we have been hearing so far by, by my partner. 
Um, so uh, we, we, in Italy, we have uh, uh, two, uh, two uh, different uh, studies, two different in research, and two different uh, um, perspectives. Uh, one was on students, school, school, uh, elementary school children. So the same that uh, my colleagues in Portugal and in the uh, and uh, in the other part of Europe just presented. And the other one are um, a preliminary investigation that was done in uh, in the prison setting. So the implementation of the TM program with prisoners and uh, and uh, prison officers. Um, so these are the two presentations that uh, I'm going to share briefly with you today. Um, as uh, I, I just uh, commented, the results were very similar across the various parts of, of, of Europe. So um, in Italy, we had data uh, on children uh, in elementary school, uh, the same school that we have just seen the video um, uh, at the beginning of, of this, this meeting today. Um, so children, as my colleagues uh, told you, were, were assessed by their teachers. So before and after the, the, the TM, um, children were uh, evaluated by the, the school teacher. Uh, and again, they were evaluated uh, for uh, the level of anxiety, hyperactivity, problems with uh, relationships um, and uh, emotional difficulties in general. Uh, so the, 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 the important part of this uh, um, of this uh, uh, intervention and this research is that we had uh, a randomized control trial, meaning that we divided the classes in two groups. Some of them received the, the, the transcendental meditation immediately and other classes were put under waiting list. So it means that they were tested before uh, at the beginning of, of the, the research after three months, and then they received the interventions, the TM intervention as well. Um, and I'm telling you this because uh, um, in order to really have uh, solid scientific data for the um, efficacy of TM, it is important to, to do this kind of research. So the randomized control trial, meaning that, that we compare uh, the, 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 uh, the emotional distress, the um, emotional and relationship problems uh, before and after the intervention in children who received the intervention and in children who were not receiving the intervention. They were like normal, uh, in normal state. Um, we do, we run this, this study in a, in a school, a large school that we have just seen in the video in um, Northern Italy. Uh, and we have data for 92 students. Uh, half female and half male, uh, with a mean age of, uh, let's say, 10 year old. Uh, and we included five classes. Three classes received immediately the, the, the TM, so the quiet time intervention, and other two classes were put on waiting list. And then they received the TM in the second part of the school year, basically. And uh, they were assessed with the same uh, um, uh, data that were uh, used also in Portugal and in the other part of, uh, uh, of Europe. And you see here that uh, uh, we observed decrease in emotional problems, uh, significant decrease in emotional problems after the TM. So the blue bar are the, the classes that received the intervention immediately. And the red bars are the classes that were on the waiting list. So they received nothing, just the, 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 the assessment, the, the, the evaluation. And you see here uh, the, the huge differences in this blue bar here and this red bar here. So meaning that students that received the, 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 the meditation uh, decreased their emotional problems and also their relational problems. Uh, and in opposition, uh, conversely, 
students who did not receive the, 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 the meditation program, they had an increase in their emotional problems uh, from, the, from baseline to the subsequent three months. So it means that uh, adding in school this, this TM um, significantly improved the emotional status of, of the children. So uh, we then uh, put together the, the, all the, the five classes before and after interventions. And you see here again um, the, the improvement, the significant improvement before and after the intervention. So again, emotional problems, but also somatization. So it is an important uh, indicator here because the children tend to express their difficulties, their distress, toward the physical symptoms. And the meditation was able to significantly decrease uh, those, those uh, symptoms here. So they feel also a physical uh, well-being, not only emotional well-being, and also a significant decrease in, the, in, um, in children difficulties in the total score. So in conclusion, um, this is a randomized controlled trial. So it's a solid scientific data that provide evidence on the beneficial effect of uh, TM on student well-being uh, when compared to a control condition. Um, and also uh, the, the fact that the TM is feasible, is doable within uh, in an elementary school setting with, with good, good uh, effect. Um, and uh, so mm, it, it, this is uh, an important uh, uh, finding because, uh, again, the, the, the results are solid. It's a, con a controlled trial and there are very few studies uh, on uh, such younger population. So uh, it's a really an important uh, adding to the literature on, on TM, on transcendental meditation. So this is the first line of, uh, of uh, intervention that we did. The second, uh, the second experience that we had, and some colleagues will talk about the, this experience um, uh, after my presentation, is the implementation of TM in prison, in a prison context. Uh, importantly, we will see uh, this afternoon that we applied the meditation in, um, in uh, staff and prison officers and also in inmates. And those inmates were those with a very long uh, uh, detention time. Okay, so this is the, the, the sample. So a total of 32 individuals, uh, half of them was inmate, half of them was prison, was, uh, prison officers. And these are the uh, social demographic characteristics. Um, and we, uh, we tested them with the same instruments that we used for teachers and for adults in the Friends project. So that's the reason why this is an extension of the Friends project. And we see here basically the same results that we obtained for teachers. Again, so this is the total sample. So over the 32 individuals that received meditation, we have a, a decrease in anxiety from pre-intervention to post-intervention and decrease in stress, significant effect, uh, but also an increase in positive effect, so increase in well-being, positive emotions that increase and negative emotions that decrease. So the balance, the overall well-being increased after receiving uh, the, the, the protocol of, of the TM. And the results uh, on the inmate samples, huge decrease in depression. And being a clinical psychologist, to me, this is a very promising result because depression in, in, in prison setting is very tough to, to, to address. So meditation was very uh, helpful there. To replicate the, 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 this intervention also with a larger sample and we, we wanted to do that but of course because of the COVID uh, uh, health emergency it was not possible to do that but we plan to do that as soon as possible so we wanted to um, to, to expand the sample and really provide the opportunity for many more inmates and prison officers to receive the TM because we observed very promising results in terms of anxiety, depression, stress, and also improvement in emotional well-being. And the fact of uh, 
entering the prison setting and being able to deliver the, 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 the intervention with this, uh, uh, this uh, peculiar population was really uh, very, um, very important. Mm -hmm. So um, everywhere and but in the Europe, in Italy particularly, but also in, in other parts of, of, of Europe, mm -hmm. the, set, the prison setting is very stressed. So being able to having a, a very promising uh, tool as TM uh, yeah. is important to, uh, to be able to relieve this stress also in this context. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention and I, this, these are the promising results. Thank you. Thank you, Chiara. Now we come back to Portugal, to Algarve, to, to Sergio Vieira, so she will, she will uh, give the conclusion of our research. Thank, thank you, Sergio, your turn. Okay, uh, only to say that the, the different results uh, show um, the possibility to increase um, uh, well-being uh, in the school context, in different school contexts, in different uh, uh, level of the school uh, and with, with different uh, teachers um, the application of the transcendental meditation in the school uh, the or uh, research uh, suggests um, a positive result that increase uh, the helping and create uh, um, good conditions for the self-regulation and uh, outcomes of the academic uh, results. So um, thank you for, for all and uh, good work. Thank you, Sergio, and thank you to the whole research team. They did a fantastic work with this research. Uh, now we finish this, our second part of, the, um, of the, this, our event. Now we pass to the experience from all the participant countries and then as uh, we start with Portugal. 